96.7 FM. You're listening to Yoko Nashville. <laughs> this is the social update with me, <laughs> Leah Sykes. I almost said 96.7 FM twice right after each other. So Well, they need to know, so it's fine. Yeah, well, you're listening to 96.7 FM. I have a special co-host today, my husband, Devin. What up? Yeah, usually I'd have Renee here. She's not feeling as well this morning, so Devin stepped up, did his husbandly duties. As did the responsible said. thing, you <laughs> exactly. know? Exactly, and he's here today. Um, but... Even more exciting. Sorry, Devin. Mm -hmm. We have a really <laughs> special guest with us today, and I'm so excited to get all the behind the scenes, hear about the songwriting, the performance. I know you have a massive tour coming up, and you just added more dates, too. But without further ado, Tyler Rich. What's up? What What's up? up? How's it going? Ow, ow. Pretty great. <laughs> I'm so excited you're here this morning. Thank you for having me. This yeah. is awesome. I'm surrounded by it. Cali Boys. Yes, you are. Yeah. How's that feel? It's good, right? It kind of feels good. Yeah. Well, she's from Florida, so I'm from Florida, we so just I love doubled up on her. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's different, though. Yeah. It's definitely a different environment. No question. We were talking about this. I feel like I love California and, like, the coast and all that, but the beaches in Florida, as far as, like, um, livability or just going to, like, oh, yeah. enjoy the nice sand and the water. I feel like California beaches are beautiful, but then you get out there and it's, like, negative seven degrees and there's seaweed everywhere yeah. and there's just, like... Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, other than what that like 50 mile stretch in Southern in California. Malibu, yeah, exactly. The entire state is just frozen with great whites. Yeah. yeah hey, well, 100%. that too. Yeah. I forgot yeah. about the great whites. But that being said, we still love Cali. We have yeah. some sharks in Florida too. Just maybe less common. I don't know. I think more aggressive too, right? In Florida? Yeah. You guys I have be like, shocked. this is a, a random guess, but I'm assuming you have like bull sharks and tiger sharks and the, yeah. the ones that are frequent and aggressive. Yeah. yeah see, California wins. Didn't you have well, friends that like. Yeah. Like, we've known people who have... <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. Shark right. attacks? Past, yeah, I shark attacks. I should not yeah. laugh. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, Florida's filled with crazy people. It's fair to assume they, we have crazy sharks, too. So Florida man beats shark with his own fish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You don't hear that about California men. No, I don't think so as much, but I feel like they definitely exist. More like California man surfs, surfs next to shark and closes the gap between shark and human <laughs> yeah. existence. Like, I, don't, I don't know. The gap is smaller than we thought. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, 100%. Where specifically in California are you from? Right almost where Devin grew up. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, really? U Yuba City. So mm -hmm. it's like an hour outside of Nash. Or <laughs> no, it's not. God, I, I wish. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Just go home in an Make hour. Christmas way easier. God. An hour uh, right outside of Sacramento. Amazing. Yeah. Were your parents super musical or did you just kind of fall into it on your own? It was my Uncle Tim on my dad's side. Uh, my uncle was super musical. That whole side of the family was musical in general, but it was my uncle with his guitar. Every family hang out. Him and his buddies would show up with a bunch of acoustics, sit in a circle, jam for hours. And you're just like, I want to do that. Yeah, man. I was yeah. like, when I got that first guitar, my goal was not necessarily I want to be in a band. I was mm -hmm. like, I want to play with my uncle and his friends mm -hmm. yeah. at these family hangouts. Mm -hmm. That first time was that you it? got to chime in and play a song, do you remember what song it was? I can't remember. <laughs> I, I think I do know what song it was. Okay, <laughs> tell us. You have like, to tell us. It. it was a Creed song. Let's go. Stop. I love that. Yeah. I just heard. <laughs> News, the today. news today i'm pretty sure it was um can you take me higher <laughs> yeah that part oh i got God. a we are yeah. kindred spirits bro a li <laughs> line six amp electric you know and um spider and so i was playing yeah and yeah. i was in that living room they had their acoustics and i was this young kid with a new electric guitar and amp playing leads with them and stuff and wow. um yeah, that was like my one song I learned to audition for the uncle's friend group. <laughs> How old were you, you think? When you 14. 14? Yeah, yeah. I feel like 12 to 14 is that age where you like pick up passions or you like you kind of just really dive into one. Like you might be playing sports and you might be playing guitar and you might be, you know, an artist or painting or whatever mm -hmm. it is, but you kind of get like locked into the one thing that like you want to do for the rest of your life, whether yeah. you can figure it out or not, you know? They say those are some of the most formative years. Yeah. And like the music that you listen to at that age yeah, is kind like, of going to shape. This is my music. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm listening to. You yeah. start having ownership over those things you're passionate about, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. The my music thing sticks too because that's where my whole country thing came from was my mom listened to it, but then my uncle played it, you know? So mm -hmm. in these jam sessions was anything from Garth Brooks to Brooks yep. and Dunn to like country rock, like CCR, Tom Petty, that kind of stuff. And, yeah. But then I was coming in with like, 
I don't know, Hard Rock and Lincoln Park mm-hmm. and Papa Roach and Papa Roach is from Sacramento, you know, so and Deftones from Sacramento. So really cool hometown stuff. And my uncle's friends are like, what that? What is this stuff? What, yeah. what are we listening to here? Uh, You're literally speaking my bio too. Yeah. It's kind of, <laughs> like it's kind of crazy. Like my mom was the same, Garth Brooks, all yeah. that. Um, my uncle didn't play, but he was a huge country music fan, like huge Alan Jackson fan. Um, and then I loved rock too. It's yeah. like, you know. The worlds combined. I know. Where we grew up, that was, it was just kind of what it was. It was normal. Right? Yeah. yeah. Was it expected that in that environment you listened to a little bit of everything or did it just have to do with all of those people in your life bringing that influence? At least the people I grew up around, yeah, a thousand percent. Mm-hmm. Um, with Fol- Folsom, right, is where, you're, yeah. Orangevale, Folsom, yeah. Orangevale, Fol- yeah. Um, Yuba City, is similar, it's, it's like a hub, you know, so you could go 60 minutes any direction and, and you're either going to hit a beach, a mm-hmm. major city, a mountain, a lake, um, hundreds of miles of farmland with nothing but cow. I mean, redwoods, the ocean, the redwood. Yeah. yeah. It's, so there's inspiration of every genre of person mm-hmm. and music mm. anywhere you went. Yeah. Bay area hip hop was right around the corner. Nineties mm-hmm. alternative third eye blind was right around the corner though. You know, they were from San Francisco as well and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was cool to grow up around that with all those different influences and these, uh, I'm super thankful for it. I think it shows in my music and, Hundred percent. Sometimes yeah. I feel like when I talk about it, because I'm literally exactly the same. I feel like sometimes I'm like, "Is this a blessing or a curse that I love so many things?" It's because I also want to like showcase that in my music, and sometimes I get a little like ADD with like, "I want to do this rock song. I want to do this country song. I want to do this ballad. I want to do." You know what I mean? Yeah, I call it a curse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I'm constantly yeah like, oh man, this song is a massive smash. This song's a massive smash. Yeah. They could never be together. Yeah, <laughs> they could never go together on yeah, the yeah. same album or but anything like, like that. I think that's just us as artists kind of being like conceptual and trying to like wrap things up in, a, in the same. Because also I love John Mayer and every album he almost redefined himself and had a theme, right? Yeah. But like I truly believe that like people don't care. Like I think they could live together. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I think mm-hmm. it's just hard for us to kind of conceptualize an album with that song and then this song and then, have, yeah. you know. I almost think they would probably like it. Yeah. The fan would like it. Yeah. Totally. Um, yeah. I mean, John Mayer, every album. So good. Dude, the, he's the king. Yeah. The time I actually went from thinking John Mayer was just for girls to <laughs> uh, <laughs> to loving John Mayer oh, man. was I went and saw him in LA and at Nokia, I think. And Was he, it that show? I think so. You're kidding me. Did you go to that one? No, that's my like. Oh, that's the one. That's yeah, the it's live the live at Nokia Theater, yeah, 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 yeah. 2007. And he yeah. did all three different. Yeah, I know. Oh my God. It's one of my favorite live <laughs> I didn't DVDs know of you all were time. There. I hate yeah. you so much. Now. <laughs> it's one of my favorite live DVDs of all time. Uh, and I don't think it actually made the cut on the DVD, but he says, "I want to thank everybody here right now because." Half of you were forced to come. <laughs> and so I want to thank you for listening to your friend. And for the friend, I want to thank you for dragging your friends along. I love that. Um, and he was just funny and just crazy talented. Yeah. Have you... Instant fan. Last California question from that culture that I know because of Devin. Were you ever in a metal band or a punk rock or anything like that band? Uh, yeah, never metal. Um, I listened to plenty of it. But yeah, <laughs> punk rock, uh, pop punk. Pop punk probably pop punk, for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, our, I mean, our high school, Yuba City High School, is so small. The, the amount of musicians there was a handful. You know, you walked mm-hmm. in the quad, anybody play guitar, and you'd see like a finger pop up, maybe. Yeah. You know, and so when I was 15 and wanted to play with people my age and not just my uncle, you know, and start a band, it was, hey, what do you guys want to play? And then we all got in a room together, and everybody at the you know, Blink 182 was blowing up right then. Some 41, Newfound Glory, all these top 40 pop punk bands mm-hmm. were huge mm-hmm. you know and so 15 year old high school kids were like we for sure should do that and yeah yeah got in a garage and we i mean did it all of high school but what's really funny is there's videos of when i was like 19 and i was in my what some would call a screamo <laughs> band um we call it pop rock yeah. indie rock whatever yeah. um the warp tour circuit yeah. that kind of stuff yeah we um there was a couple times where power went out on stage and one of the guys in the band, we had we were a dual singing band, so two guitar players that sang, a bassist and a drummer. The other singer loved country. The two other two guys in the band hated country oh, of the no. passion, mm-hmm. but they knew the songs we loved and you know the classics in a sense. Mm-hmm. And all the power went out on stage, and so we um, we started doing just like a metal version of Friends in Low Places. Oh my <laughs> god! Stop! Just for double bass. 
had to get it. And that face the whole time. Yes. Yeah, yeah. that stank face. But yeah. double bass. Yeah, I got friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Just messing around on stage till power came back on, but then the power turned on in the middle of the song, so then we finished it as this full blown double bass That's metal insane. version. I bet that live moment was insane. Yeah. insane. And what's funny is that every punk rock kid, every you know, angsty teenager yeah. there screamed every word because we all grew up around mm -hmm. farms. We all grew up listening to country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So everybody knew the song wow. and it was this really cool uh, worlds collide thing because then all of a sudden, you know, a few years later I became a solo artist and then, I mean, God, that was 15 years ago. That's which like, is insane. There are yeah. so many country artists here who used to be in either the metal scene or the punk rock, that kind of scene. We have Mitchell Tenpity, Dance Myers, Hardy, Devin, you. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm saying we put all of you guys on a headline and we just make it look like this massive country show and then everybody shows up and it's just metal and pop rock and like <laughs> punk and all that pull a quick fake on them yeah, yeah pull a fake on them yeah I mean, hardy pretty much does that already I know, yeah, yeah true <laughs> that's a good point that, that new one you just put out or at least that video so you posted sick. so so it's just a metal i mean it's it's just a country metal song yeah. i know I hate but him. it's a him it's 100 percent him i hate him so much yeah i wonder if like you think like at that point in our lives like and i know it was not just northern california that it was doing but like there was this certain like culture pop of that type of music and like those were some of the best times of my life you know from 15 to 18 19 whatever being mm -hmm. in a band playing every weekend at this church or this show or the underground or the boardwalk or whatever it was yeah. you know and you you know all that i can say that you know all those yeah. places in sacramento and like i don't know if it's either that we grew up and like we're out of the scene or if it's like you know, it was just that pop of music in that one time and that perfect storm. But I just don't feel like there's that same like it doesn't scene. exist. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? It's so crazy to me because that was such a big part of our life, like meeting people, starting a band, writing songs, playing shows every weekend at all the different venues. And like the, the you know, you wouldn't there was like 10 different schools. There was El, El, like El Camino and all these different places. But like everybody knew each other even though if they went to different mm -hmm. schools because we would all show up on the weekends and like go to metal shows together and there was just this 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 community that was just unlike anything i've ever experienced yeah i got goosebumps because I, I lived that life mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, know, I miss it yeah that uh yeah you met all these different bands from other show <clears throat> from other schools and um yeah i mean there's no really way to explain it but like why is it not like how like were we just that lucky and it was just that like perfect timing of like you said those poppy punky bands being on top 40 and like influencing mm -hmm. children and i don't know it just doesn't it does, i don't feel like it doesn't happen now and what's funny is that it might and we're just old that's the other thing <laughs> yeah. that's the thing is it that or am i just like completely so far out detached of the loop, from it you know? but those, but those venues don't, don't even exist that's what anymore I'm saying. it's like I, I just don't think there's the same like for the church yeah. i don't know the church thing for everybody uh that yeah. devin is mentioning so um churches at least back then used to rent the hall for um or i guess the service area the, like worship space the worship or whatever, space yeah. um <clears throat> to bands for shows or maybe not even rent because a lot of times there are free shows or if there was a donation it would go towards the church mm -hmm. and there was only two rules don't take your shirts off and don't cuss mm -hmm. um you could mosh you could crowd surf mm -hmm. you could do whatever you want under the eyes of god just do mm -hmm. not cuss or take your shirts <laughs> off <laughs> um, and those were some of the those were some of the heaviest Dude, shows. Scary. Yeah, those were like the... Uh, and a lot of the Christian metal bands are the heaviest of them all. Yeah, 100%. And totally. Pending Doom, do you remember that band? Oh, yeah, 100%. Oh <laughs> it's I love incredible. It. I love it. Well, since we're yeah. talking about home, talk to me about the song Feels Like Home. Feels Like Home. Nice. Um, nice little segue. Yeah, that's good. Thanks, guys. Um, segue, I just pictured. Segway yeah. is also the scooter. Yeah. yeah. You just segue to ride into that. Yeah, like the mall yeah. top yeah. thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Call me Paul Blart. Paul Blart. <laughs> yeah. uh, feels Like Home is my easily probably with top two or three favorite song on the album. Mm -hmm. I put it as number one because to me it was like a, a statement song of just what my shows are like and what I wish every bar in America was like. Um, I went to Dublin and I was walking around all these dive bars out there and I'm like super Scottish Irish heritage and I felt this weird innate feeling of home when I got mm -hmm. there. We, it was mine and Sabina, my, my wife, uh, for everybody listening. It was our first trip overseas. We went to Rome, we went to Barcelona, then we went to Ireland. Beautiful places, but for some reason, when I got to the overcast, pub heavy, fireplace and fiddles mm -hmm. type bars, mm -hmm. uh, with a bunch of strangers who don't know each other, 
chugging beers and their arms around each other dancing and singing and nobody knows each other just having a good time mm. i was like wow this is this is incredible um and then i just kind of wrote down how it's weird somewhere so far away could feel mm. like home love that and two years later hanging out with um to stefano and john knight and talking about this this whole idea or sorry uh andrew um Oh my God, blanking on his last name. De Roberts. De Roberts. Yeah. Andrew De Roberts yeah. um, and John Knight. And we were just talking about that song, that feeling, and then related it back to touring in the States. Yeah. And, you know, you play these fairs, middle of nowhere mm -hmm. <laughs> during the summer, um, or even just a random show. And then you go to a bar yeah. that everybody in town says is the best bar, mm -hmm. and you get there, and it is uh, nothing but like maybe a broken bowl in a corner. Um, a few beers on tap it's the divest of all the dives yeah. but everybody there is singing all the same songs you sing in your hometown mm -hmm. they're all drinking the same beers mm -hmm. it looks exactly like every dive bar you've ever been to mm -hmm. and so that was where i kind of combined these ideas of um a place that makes you feel like home whether you're from there or not whether you know anybody or not i love that dancing with strangers making out with strangers and hopefully that's what people feel like when they go to your show you know what I mean? Dance and make out with strangers. There you <laughs> yeah. go. Just don't Divide. take your shirt off. Yeah. Or cuss. Yeah. Or cuss. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, guys, you heard yeah. it here. This is Tyler Rich. Feels like home. Don't go anywhere. We have so much more to get into. 96.7 FM. You are listening to the social update. That was Tyler Rich with Feels Like Home. He is also our special guest today. Tyler, what's poppin'? <laughs> What's popping? Brand new whip. <laughs> Just hopping. <laughs> I got options. Right. Yeah, that's right. Also, Sorry. special co-host, guest co-host. What did we decide last time? Co-star um, or something like that? You know, my grandpa said, call me whatever you want. Just not late for dinner. All right. So, husband, most <laughs> handsome man in the world. I remember that one. <laughs> many things. Dog whisperer. Yeah, yeah there you, there you yeah. go. Um, but Devin fine. Dawson, yeah. co-host today. Um, we were just having a conversation about basically the journey of finding your sound and how you're the only one with all of those exact inspirations. So whether it's a song that you hear that was written by somebody else or you going into a room and writing, just seeing what happens, how do you know that something is a Tyler Rich song? That is such a good question. And I think that's something I kind of always am chasing at mm -hmm. the same time. Um, when I'm right, it's a feeling. I, uh, that's such a good, you feel it. Yeah. Um, Where do you feel it? Do you think? Oh, you know, it's all in my body. In your heart. <laughs> you get that. Uh, I think my voice sounds different on something that's mine because I sing it with a little more understanding. Because, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, yeah, we, we yeah. for, you know, every, the natural way for everybody listening is, you know, you get in a room at 11 o'clock in the morning, you write till about three or four. And then um, it is what it is. And you sing brand new melodies you just learned and wrote that day. And um, sometimes it sounds like you just learned and wrote it that day. Sometimes <laughs> it sounds like a record. Mm. And if it sounds like a record. To me, that's an immediate kind of, oh, hey, this is something special. This is me. It just sinks in right away and you know how to, you know how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a, yeah, that's a really good question. It, I'm constantly trying to, on a more technical term, co constantly trying to fill spots in my set mm. that I am filling mm -hmm. with unreleased old songs, mm. certain energies. Um, there's a song I wrote a few years ago that'll never come out but we still play it every set because it's such a good energy in the middle of the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, try always kind of trying to write for those moments. If there's a cover song that we love and we crush live and the crowd goes crazy, try to recreate that in my vein, mm -hmm. you know, and you, you can do it 30 times and still not have it. <laughs> and so yeah. I don't know about you. I feel like it's so hard for me to try to like go in with something I want to write and write that. Like if I'm like, I need this or I need this kind of tempo for the show or I need, I just, it's so hard for me to like, try it and then like accomplish it like on like a this is an incredible song level like i don't know if it's like feels contrived because i'm trying to get it yeah like i feel like i work better when i just come up with a concept and then what's the best musical bed for that and like just serve the song and then when i get to the end okay what's the application of this and then how, wh how does it sit next to the other 12 and like yeah. rather than like i don't know it's just harder for me that way i wish i could be better at like i need this let's get it let's you know go do mean? it yeah, I feel like the same. I feel the same thing. Contrived is for sure a good way to put it because you're immediately thinking of the melodies of that song. You're immediately thinking of the chords of that song, the key. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing it, I, I strictly do just try to go on on a vibe. I'll mm -hmm. say I want this tempo, mm -hmm. energy, mm -hmm. 
and I won't even necessarily mention other songs right. and I'll see what the other people in the room will kind of come up with with me. Um, the And first of all, your husband's just like an incredible writer. Like when we write together, the way your brain works is just inspiring and just metal. You hear that? It's awesome. I, I've yeah. written with you. <laughs> right. Thanks, bro. I appreciate um, that. I'm always kind of, I'm always waiting. Like <clears throat> you'll start thinking, you'll walk away and you'll come back and I'm like, he's coming back with something genius right now. Some, something yeah. cool is going to happen. Um, but when, so for you were saying you come up with the concept and what's the best way musically to bring that to life? Mm -hmm. um, I always thought that as well. And then a song that just came out recently that completely caught me off guard that um, Cody Johnson, Till You Can't. Oh yeah. It's such oh, a yeah. heartfelt it's like, like song like of the year lyric. and like, yeah. Yeah, song of the year lyric, um, heartfelt, gives you chills, makes you question your relationships with your family. Like yeah. I gotta step up. Yeah. But it's got a big old four on the floor and tempo. A huge moment at the end where he's just, yeah, like screaming. Yelling. I mean, yeah. yeah. And Matt Rogers wrote that, you know, mm -hmm. and I hit up Matt and I was like, yo, congrats, dude. This is huge. Um, and he's like, thanks, man. I was like, I got a question. Like, what did the demo sound like? Yeah. What did the, <laughs> I said, what did the demo sound like? Was this a slow song? And he goes, yeah, it was. Um, he said, we, it was, we had a couple of different versions, but then when we heard this final, he goes, we, we flipped, we lost our minds. We're like, who would have thought that this song could have been a big old mm -hmm. stadium anthem mm -hmm. type song? Do you ever struggle with demoitis? Every song. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I think I do, but I also feel like I never really get the production right in the room. And maybe that's just because I love, I have a producer brain as well. Mm -hmm. And so I think they can get close, but I don't know. For our listeners, this is your word of the day, demoitis. It's when you get a demo back of a song it's not a disease. and it's not finished. <laughs> yeah, It's not finished, but you get it so stuck in your head that when you try and change anything, it's just impossible to let go and put something of the else way it sounded in the mistakes yeah. and all. The yeah, things. exactly. The that vibe. is your that is your word for the day. Um, demoitis. Um, but the last two years, so much has changed. Obviously, pandemic. Don't know if you heard of it, but uh <laughs> How do you think that changed the way that you created? Were you super into Zoom rights? Did you hate them? Hated them at first. Mm -hmm. um, just like for as active as I am on social media, I hate being active on social media. Yeah. And But one thing that at the beginning of COVID, it forced you to. Mm -hmm. you know, it forced you to... Um, I don't know, fold into the only way to stay relevant in a only time way where you could connect. You can't do anything, yeah. right? But then immediately when I started doing it and started doing the lives and all these little things, it turned into connecting on a whole different way with fans, mm -hmm. which then Zooms were super weird at first as well. But then once I got used to them, it was also a cool new way that, I mean, I still do Zoom writes sometimes now with friends in LA, sorry, friends in LA that I would only write with if I went to LA, but now we can write with a tool that we always had, yeah. but we just never thought about actually using it. Just like Instagram Live was a tool that we always had. Didn't have to. But know. we just weren't using because we didn't have to. Right. Um, Zoom rights are cool. There is a disconnect of energy that I- That's like, what I say every time. God, I mean, there's nothing like being in a room. We've, we've written in a room once. The other two were Zoom. Correct. Yeah. Um, the energy when, I do something and then you jump up and you're like, yo, that's dope. Yeah. And you run around and then you come back like, yo, yo, what about this? And then everybody's like hyped and everybody yeah. got goosebumps and they're jumping yeah. up and down. Yeah. You don't get that on Zoom because you can't even sing at the same time. Mm -hmm. you know, you're like, I have an idea. Yeah. You, know, you raise your hand. I miss the moments of like in the room being like, wait, did you just say this? And it's like, no, but that's really cool. I should have yeah. said that. And um, yeah, definitely there's something missing, but there's also something so nice about just ending the call in your in your home in your pajamas in like three minutes <laughs> it's yeah. really nice um but like obviously the digital space has changed a lot and you are utilizing that a lot so you had a little bit of you that came with a whole nft kind of project thing can you tell me a little bit about that how did you get into that space nfts <laughs> yeah. i know nothing so i'm it's also a dedication too it's a dedication at the same time right meaning for the late andrew dorf where you oh. wrote it oh him? got it um I, that might be for one of the next ones that's oh. coming out um oh well then tell me about it too it, it's all in uh well that's all kind of an, an idea process brainstorm right now cool um i've been lucky enough to cut two of andrew's last songs that he ever turned in mm -hmm. um 11, 11 which was on my first album and then this new one a little bit of you he um incredible songwriter so it's really cool to you know give give life to a couple songs yeah for people that don't know andrew uh, passed away a couple of years ago. He was a super insanely talented and sweet 
songwriter and just like really well known in the town and just everybody loved him. Um, and he was known for being just like a lyricist, you know, like mm -hmm. he didn't sing, he didn't play guitar. He just walked in and started talking. Yeah. And mm -hmm. like, it was just this yeah. beautiful process, you know, and he was such an amazing guy and we all miss him. And, um, he was just a great songwriter. And so getting a chance to cut any of his songs is just yeah. so cool. Definitely. Um, and with this whole NFT thing, we are releasing different versions. So that's what we're talking about for like the next ones. Cool. Um, the first two were a collaboration with XM, the highway as at like both of our first and big machines ever NFT. Yeah. Cause none of us really knew what we were doing. And so we're like, why don't we do this together? This sounds safe. Love that. Comfortable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and we'll put the first ones out for free as a way to get my fans, get myself my first NFT mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, uh, listeners of radio, like everywhere, a chance to get into that world. It's free. There's no risk. And then once you see how easy it is and that it's cool and you own this thing, maybe you want to buy one later or whatever. Yeah. And so uh, we are, we did two releases of 5,000 each and they both sold out wow. or they were all claimed uh, in a day. Wow. Which was, I literally was like, <laughs> That's hold on deal. guys, 5,000 is, are we sure That's we don't want to like, yeah. Hundred, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it looks cool, right? You know? Yeah. Um, but the cool thing about the NFT so community awesome. is, as soon as like I posted, the, the first like thousand went right away of just people. They're like, "Okay, oh, cool. I'll download a, a sweet account and do mm -hmm. the thing," and then it hit all of a sudden like a thousand disappear in a second. So then it becomes like a trending thing, mm. and then all of a sudden it's on like front pages of things. People are talking about it, and then um, and they're all numbered, you know. So the idea is that it's my rookie card. Love it. And 10 years from now when we're doing stadiums Damn, and stuff. I love that. That's country cool. Country metal, you know. And so <laughs> so does that person, right, country metal. Country metal and stadiums. Does that yeah. person own all of each NFT or do you still in the label and the Sirius XM retain some ownership of the NFT as well? And how does that work? Uh, so the typical model right. is, I believe, 10% ownership of it as far as trading guys. value. For you guys yeah as far okay. as trading value 10 cool. or 20 percent yeah. um and i believe that's for nfts across the board mm -hmm. even though i've released a couple i'm st i'm still learning yeah, I mean, yeah. and this. that's the only reason i'm asking because i don't know but i am fascinated by it you know i think it's obviously something that has some potential with the way we release music and making fans you know feel special rightfully yeah. so in certain ways um and it's just a really cool thing i'm still trying to wrap my head around it a little bit but so yeah. the the thing that we're doing with this that makes these special um, is the first one is if you have to have it to be able to hear the audio behind it. And mm. so pretend it's like a collector's card that could talk to you, right? Mm. Um, and if you click the first one, it's explaining what the song's about. Then the second one, it's, it's pitched as like, it's not something I'll ever talk about in an interview. The only mm. way for you can ever hear what missing her means is if you have the second NFT. Mm. And um, that is my personal connection as recording a song I didn't write. Mm -hmm. um, my personal connection to the lyric, what it meant to me. Um, and so that's what NFT two explains. NFT three and four are going to be explaining something else, which we kind of touched on a little bit. Um, and then, so what does it mean to you? I'm I can't tell you. I know. <laughs> but if you go on Sweet, you can trade <laughs> yeah, with other video. NFTs to get <laughs> NFT out. number two. But one of the cool things this. is, um, you know, we're both 49ers fans, right? So yep. mm -hmm. I've heard 49ers are doing a thing where they're going to be coming out with certain NFTs, where the perks of the NFT are. Um, you get early access to specific game tickets. You get mm -hmm. access to certain boxes early, that kind of thing. Um, some festivals are doing things like, you know, Coachella and Stagecoach, those type of festivals have sponsored after parties, pre-parties, pool parties from brands and all that kind of stuff that you have to be cool to get into. And get like, the these, yeah, these things in a wristband. Whereas then if you own that NFT, which I'm assuming is not a cheap NFT by any right. means, you have lifetime access to those type of parties. Damn. Mm -hmm. So people are getting super creative of like, oh, why would I want to own this random monkey that this five-year-old drew in kindergarten that's worth mm -hmm. 50 grand? Because the perks are worth Yeah, it's not grand. about the art anymore. It's about the perks. Yeah, yeah. We had an NFT expert in on the show like two or three weeks ago, and I got a whole education on NFTs I and mean, what they can be. Anything is possible. It's just, and that's the cool thing about it. It's just like how, how crazy is your imagination? And mm -hmm. then like, how, what do you think people are going to want and care about? Like, it's just like... Possibilities are endless. Yeah, kind of crazy. One hundred percent. Well, let's get yeah. back to the music. This is Tyler Rich. A little bit of you. Don't go anywhere. We have way more to talk about. We'll see you in a minute. That was Tyler Rich. A little bit of you on Yoko Nashville, ninety six point seven FM. You're listening to the Social Update with me, Leah Sykes, my special co-host Devin Dawson, and specifically today, our special guest. 
Tyler Rich. Happy to be back. Thank you for still being here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for not running immediately when you walked in here and it was 800 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> so hot. <laughs> yeah. Way better than it was. Way better. Um, oh, song name. Avito 28486 um, wants to have visitors in the studio come see it. Wants to know the name of the song, a little bit of you, and that tambourine or something just creates the vibe. Are yeah. you a tambourine man? I don't know if there's a tambourine in there, but it's a... Uh, <laughs> It's something. But the whole production is a vibe. Jaron Johnson is a just a monster. So, yeah. So good. Thanks, Vito. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about your wife. Yeah, please. <laughs> if we can. Because we were talking a little bit about Instagram Live and those things before. And you guys over quarantine did that kind of couples FaceTime thing, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we yeah. got to be a part of it and yeah. do shots and things like that. Oh, yeah. That's right. She... <laughs> I was she, so drunk I couldn't remember. Sorry. <laughs> it was like 11 a.m. <laughs> on a Sunday. Oh, it was a brunch thing. Yeah, we were, yeah it was a brunch. It was, it was Sunday brunch. We did. Yeah. We did tequila shots. I think. 100%. We did do yeah, tequila absolutely. shots. Savina is so much fun. How did yeah. you meet her? Tell me the whole story. Uh, we met at Stagecoach. Uh, Stagecoach. Right. Everybody listening is basically Coachella weekend three, except for it's country. Country uh, Coachella. Same mm -hmm. place. Same people. Different outfits. Mm -hmm. um, and it, uh, we met the good old fashioned way in a pit. Um, <laughs> I wasn't performing. I, I walked up and said hello, and she ran away. <laughs> she was like recently out of a relationship and wasn't ready for the conversation. I know she ran away, and then I had to. Um, she gave me her name and everything, so I just found her on Instagram and then do the old stalking. sealed the deal on yeah. the old DM stalking. Yeah. I think she stalked a little more than I did. There we go. We often do. <laughs> that yeah, DM game, that. you know, was really good. And then yeah. she was just <clears throat> hooked. I also um, <laughs> slid into the DMs. Slid into the DMs. I think my line was, I think you're gorgeous. I would love to take you to dinner. You guys went to school together, Something though, right? Like we did meet at Belmont. Yeah. Met at Belmont. A single yeah, yeah. semester, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I were, mean, were if, you in a class together? No. no. <laughs> mm -mm. I, think, I think you can be like, you can be normal on a DM. Like it doesn't have to be this creepy, weird, awkward thing. Like no. just yeah. be like, just like if you would walk into a bar, like you're not going to say some creepy, weird pickup line. You're just going to be like, wow, I think you're gorgeous. Like, can I get you a drink? Or just like, just yeah. be simple and forward and normal and just like be confident. It's like my pick. Uh, yeah. And you'll get married. My pickup. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> my pickup line was honest, yep. um, which then I realized way later that for sure something people just say, but you know, she's an actress, so I had seen her in things, so I thought I knew her, whereas and she was with mm. a couple acquaintances of mine at Stagecoach, so I had an easy in, because uh, she was with Graham Bunn and a couple mm -hmm. people, and so I was like, oh, perfect talking point for me to go talk to this girl, and I said, hey, I was like, I'm Tyler, uh, I know you from somewhere, how, how do I know you? Because she was so familiar, and she's with people I know, I was like, where have we hung out before? Yeah. She goes, ah, I'm not sure, and we had talked for a few minutes, and she left, um, and then so I opened the DM with the same line hey i'll let you know when i figure out how we know <laughs> yeah, you never told me you never told me how i know you <laughs> like you i'll know. let you know when i figure it out <laughs> so when did you hang out like how did that after that how did that happen because you were living in separate places right yeah i was i had lived in nashville for a year at this point and she was in la and uh it was just like four days back and forth texting and then mm -hmm. um for everybody listening that's single and i see avito is saying stalking tips We'll, we'll call them DM tips again. Yeah, there you um, go. Marriage tips. Yeah. If you're going to send your phone number, send it in the, the middle of a message. Don't send it as a separate message because then it shows up in the inbox thread as just your phone number. They can't see the rest of the words, you know? So mm. that, as she was recently out of a relationship, intimidated that her. That was so the she, first thing you sent? No, no, no. This is like four or five days into talking back and oh, forth. okay. So then I send her um, a message in response to what she said and then my phone number at the bottom but all she saw in her oh, inbox was right, my phone number. Right. So then she's like, oh, oh. And then she freaked out. So she didn't open it for like four days. No. And left me, not even unread, left me out unopened. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. Hope you unread, bro. Yeah. Unread. Unread is so much worse. Yeah. And I was like, she doesn't even want to open it. It's because my phone number. I should have embedded it in the message secretly. Yeah. Um, she finally opened it and then didn't respond. She just texted me. But then uh, game on. I mean, that trip I was talking about in Dublin, that overseas trip was like two months later. Wow. You ever want to test a relationship and how it's going to go? Go Travel overseas with somebody. <laughs> I mean, when you go somewhere else and you're making memories and you're, you know, getting drunk and like just those are the things that bring people close together. It's like yeah. you guys are in some place that you both have never been probably and like you just like are creating memories together and getting to know each other. You know? Yeah. I mean, it was the craziest Hallmark kind of twist of fate thing of all time because 
for my 30th birthday, I was doing a solo trip to Europe, mm. uh, like a quarter wow. of life ish crisis mm -hmm. type thing. Like I'm just going to go for like five days. Mm -hmm. um, the morning after my 30th birthday, when I was supposed to fly out, I was so drunk. I slept through my flight. Nice. When I woke up, all of the airline I was on, the flights were gone for the day, oh. next like two days. And so they're like, we can give you a credit that you can use anytime within the next six months. So I just booked on another airline, went on my normal trip, came home. That six month later trip was to Italy where I was gonna go meet my friends from Germany. They were gonna fly over and meet me there. And it had been planned for months. Her and I started talking. I was like, oh yeah, what are you involved? She's like, oh, I'm going to Italy for my friend's wedding. What? And so she goes to Italy to Capri and Positano and like mm -hmm. a really nice part down there. Uh, and she's at this wedding these same days I'm in Rome. Wow. And you can't make it up. Me. Like I was, it was planned for months. Wow. And uh, so she was at the wedding for three days. She left her hang one day early to go to, to Rome with me one day before going to Barcelona, then Dublin. So she just took a train a couple hours up, met me in Rome. Wow. So crazy. Yeah. That's yeah. insane. Uh, like a couple months into talking. Yeah, a couple months into talking. That's so awesome. I think that was July and we met in May. You guys are truly perfect for each other. Yeah, like, seriously. Be, like just seeing you from afar, hanging out with you guys, like in, you know, in person, which is so weird to say, but it's just like it's evident that you guys have so much love for each other, mm -hmm. and you guys just balance each other so well. It's crazy. Yeah. At Whiskey Jam, I loved standing with her because she just dances. She's your biggest fan. 100%. It is like the most fun thing in the world. Mm -hmm. She is like my forever hype girl. Yeah. That uh, yeah, that muse that you just kind of. And it's hard to not write songs about because mm -hmm. like that's my biggest kryptonite as a writer is other concept other than love mm -hmm. even though like 90 something percent that stat of, of the biggest hits yeah. of all time are love songs yeah um but you know it's like i've written plenty about her and for her so i'm always trying to trying to think of all right cool what else am i gonna so write about today we do? Yeah. oh she did this though a few days ago and it was super cute I'm gonna, let's just do this today yeah. we'll write else. <laughs> i mean that's what's easy to write about especially if you know it you know um yeah. I would, this is, I always bring things back to John Mayer because obviously it's John Mayer, but like I talk about like, you know, there's love songs and then there's life songs, mm -hmm. you know, even heartbreak songs are grouped into love songs. But if you think about Continuum, his biggest album, half of the album isn't about love. Stop this train, heart of life, mm -hmm. uh, gravity, belief, waiting on the world to change. Like those are, have nothing to do with love yeah. from the guy who's traditionally just this relationship, you know, guy. So it's like, it's possible. I think it's a lot harder and I feel the same way. Like I'm always trying to find like that, that artist piece or that life piece or that thing that's kind of just a different, you know. That people also want to listen to. They, they can relate to as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's exactly. the thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I could write about your super sick coffee cup all day. <laughs> but why? But we would only like that exactly. song. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like partying or love. Yeah. Which is crazy because you listen to like some bands, pop bands that are massive right now, and they could write it like, okay, that's AJR and Daisy the Great song, yeah. Record Player. Mm -hmm. I got a record mm -hmm. player when I 2013. Mm -hmm. They wrote the song about the record player. Yeah. And it's just catchy enough that people are like, I love record players. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's my song. To it. Would you ever write a song about your dogs or have you? Uh, yes. Um, but I love dog songs. Yeah, hundred percent dog songs for They're sure. All sad, though. You wrote a sick that I wish that what was diamonds? Dogs, and, dogs diamonds. and diamonds. Dogs and diamonds. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dog songs for sure. When Abby, when Abby finally goes, there's gonna be, even if it's just for me. Yeah. Yeah. She's 15, 16. She will be sixteen and a half oh my in a couple days. That's crazy, wow. dude. But last night, um, or yesterday during the day, I ran upstairs to go. We went on a run. I mean, you would think she's 10. Mm -hmm. She's so energetic, mm -hmm. full of life. Um, our puppy, five month old Husky Shepherd mix. We go on walks together. Now they finally love each other. They've been around each other a couple months. So she'll run with him and all the good stuff. And came in, she ate, laid down, went upstairs, did a Zoom, came downstairs, and it looked like she had a stroke. What? Like her head is sideways. She can't stand. She's walking in a circle. And that's if she can even take a step. What? And oh so I, and I'm like, Two days before she turns 16 and a half, I'm like mm -hmm. freaking out. So I rush her down to the vet. Um, they do all like these tests on her and stuff. And so what they are like 99% sure it is, is old dog vestib vestibular disease, which is the equivalent of human vertigo. Okay. Oh, okay. I have so, seen this before. Yeah. It, in almost every case, they're better within a few days. It can last up to two weeks. But she can't walk. She can't do anything. And her head sideways and her eyes are kind of crazy. Um, do you think it was from like running around with the puppy or like no they say it's like it's neural um yeah, yeah neurological um but i mean just like crushing because 
the Super Bowl on Sunday. We're having a Super Bowl party. You guys should come. And yeah. her oh, yeah. 16th and a half birthday party. Oh. Because <laughs> she she had a 16th birthday party with a few friends. Yeah. Sweet it's baby. a big deal. Yeah. 16 and a half for a Husky is a huge it's deal. That's a huge That's deal. That's 114 in dog years. It's so many years. Yeah. So many. Yeah. So I was like, oh my God, no. But she's already better this morning. But I like, she won't pee because I I have to, I'm literally her back legs. Mm -hmm. And so I was outside in the backyard uh, just holding her up. Um, yeah. So she's under a bunch of on top of a bunch of pee pads right now. Oh. I think 16 and a half is crazy and she has already lived an incredible life, but we will be thinking about her and making sure that, yeah, um, yeah. you know, she's in the thoughts, but Sweet thanks little man. baby. So crazy. Um, real quickly, cause we're about to play it. Tell me what leave her wild means to you. Obviously so, about yeah. Sabina. <laughs> leave her wild is the Sabina anthem. Uh, <laughs> leave her wild is exactly what you said about the whiskey jam show we played where you were just next to her and she was dancing. She was just the hype girl. Um, when I met her, I was, uh, you know, driven to her in the pit because she was this energy, fun, mm -hmm. dancing, electric. Um, and so many times you get in relationships and that it get, becomes intimidating and you kind of mm -hmm. you kind of dole each, each other shine. You want that energy just for yourself. And so that was kind of, it wasn't kind of, that was my vow to her. Like I forever, I vow to forever leave you exactly the way I found you. Never try to change you and love your energy, wild, crazy ass self. I love that so much. Well, here it is. This is Tyler Rich, Leave Her Wild on Yoko Nashville. Tyler Rich, Leave Her Wild. You're listening to 96.7 FM, The Social Update with me, Leah Sykes, my special co-host today, Devin Dawson, what up? and Tyler Rich himself. Yo, yo. Yo, yo. So Super Bowl's coming up on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Is it like a sore subject? Because I know you two are a huge Niners fans. I mean, it's not as sore as it was, but it kind of sucks. It sucks because... We were two and five or three and five at one point in the season. And at that point, it was already a wash mm -hmm. to then make it all the way to the NFCC. And it's just like. Um, and we just gave away that last game. Like we were up at the half. We just went we just went three and out in the last two possessions and just couldn't get anything going. And then nothing. Jimmy G, Jimmy G a little bit, which is fine. I mean, I you know, want to be, yeah. be an asshole. But I feel bad for Jimmy. I know. I mean, the O-line was just getting crushed, yeah. too. He, I mean, what. I don't know. It just sucks. But at the same time, they put, I feel like they, they kind of have to move away as they're planning to because yeah. they put so much into Trey Lance mm -hmm. that, and, you know, Jimmy's up next year. So right now they could get something for him rather than right. him go to free, you know, free agency. Right. So I feel like they have to make this move. I like um, Trey too. I think, I think, I think at the beginning of the season, they did a lot of like games where they would switch him out. Mm -hmm. And Trey, like, is a, Jimmy runs. He's, he's a decent, like, quarterback rusher but like Trey is known for that you yeah, know yeah. and so it kind of kept the defense the other team like on their toes like is he gonna run it's gonna be the option he's gonna throw and then Jimmy's back in and then Trey's in like I thought that was a really cool strategy you yeah know? they just didn't yeah they tried it a little bit but then they kind of I think well, once Jimmy was healthy and five and, and then, <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> um, you know? yeah and I also feel like Trey um what his stat is like undefeated since high school mm -hmm. but then you think of the pandemic and college and all that stuff he just hasn't had enough snaps. Mm -hmm. He didn't go to a huge school in mean, mm -hmm. Dakota. So um, I think once he gets out there and he's playing around 60,000 people every game, He'll build that the true confidence. Trey is going to come out. Mm -hmm. And if you know Jimmy was around and the team loves Jimmy, I feel like he's not going to be getting as many snaps during practice. And mm. um, But I was at the game. I went to the NFCC game. Um, and oh, cool. it was obviously heartbreaking at the very end. Um, my wife and I are friends with... Uh, the Kittles with George and Claire. Mm -hmm. And so we were in the Kittle family suite uh, and Kyle Juszczyk's family as well, his wife nice. and his brothers and stuff. Um, and a few of the other wives on the team. And it was awesome. You know, we were celebrating, having a good time, just drinking, enjoying the game. And then when it ended, um, the sadness I felt as a fan for mm -hmm. my entire life mm -hmm. is nothing compared to the sadness of when you turn family. around and you see the family. Yeah. yeah. Um, real tears you know real like uh real true heartbreak yeah. Yeah. um and so we gave our hugs and got out as fast as we could because we're like oh my god <laughs> this is brutal yeah um, but the entire thing was worth it strictly for the fact of when kittle caught that touchdown mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the 30 people in this it, you would have thought that he just caught the, the, the winning stadium. super bowl <laughs> freaking touch like that entire suite like just went nuts because we were with this family you know and so that entire moment was worth going all the way out there to lose yeah i'm always like i've always been an underdog you know dark horse kind of guy you know and Maybe. i just i've always loved you know the niners for that i mean obviously when it was steve young and jerry rice it was a different story but yeah. the last 
six years we've gone to the championships a couple times we've gone to the super bowl like and it's always been as an underdog thing and like i think that's what i love about our team and i I, you know even even the jimmy thing it's like you know the narrative was so like oh he's look at his stats look at his but when you look at his winning stats like that when Mm -hmm. they pulled up up against the against the packers game like the dude wins you know what i mean they get it done they figure it out it's not pretty it's not glamorous but the whole team rallies around him and builds up his confidence Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I just like I like that kind of um, that energy. I just have always been. I want to go for the underdog. Like yeah. anytime I'm betting, anytime I'm, I'm just like I'm gonna go for the underdog. So yeah. get more money if you bet on the underdog. Well, that's true yeah. too. Yeah. I'm gonna say that. Well, but, it's fun. Well, well it's, I was gonna say because on that game against the Packers, um, I threw down a, a. I was a little buzzed before the game started, you know, and, and I threw down a sizable faithful. That's you know what they call for yeah. fans, mm-hmm. faithful, sizable faithful bet on DraftKings because um, we were. Underdog so much underdogged. I like that. That's good. Mm-hmm. Underdogged. Um and the dog song. The payout was song, yeah. payout was pretty nice. And so that was one of the main reasons I was like, we're for sure going to this game, the mm-hmm. NCC game. I was like, I just won 49er money. I'm yep. gonna for sure spend it on the 49 on the 49ers. Yeah. Oh yeah. uh, man. Of course you have we'll get to. him next year, but yeah. Next it was year. Fun. Bigger it's and better. Year. We went to our friend's house for the um Packers game and it was a it was a room full of Packers fans. I think I might have texted you <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. maybe. I saw the videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was brutal. And uh, I was like, we were all decked out in jerseys and stuff. And Leah texted me like before the, <laughs> she texted me before the last field goal. And she's like, read the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, don't go crazy. And I only say that, I only say that because some of the fans were so diehard that they were like getting mad. Like they were like genuinely upset, borderline tears. And yeah. so I was like, don't rub it in their face. We'll win. We'll get in the car. We'll celebrate. The best part of it is all she sent that, and then she texted me a uh, the Kendrick Lamar song, "Humble." Yeah. <laughs> Sit down. Huh. Be, Be humble. humble. <laughs> Sit down. My bass player is a Packers. He's from Green Bay, and so <sighs> him and his wife came over to watch the game. I did see that too. Yeah. He was like, "Did you see the bet? You're no. gonna love this." So before the game started, um, I only had one other friend there. It was 49ers fan, and so it was two on two. And the game, before the game started, we got on Instagram, made it official, and because we're playing Milwaukee in a few weeks on the Chris Lane tour, and the thing was, if they won, I had to wear a, a Rogers jersey at the game, uh, or at that at show, show, at that show, yeah. um, which is gonna do okay for me because yeah, it's all Green Bay fans. Lose. They're yeah. gonna win. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was like, but if the 49ers won, we're playing concert in the park in Sacramento in May. He's ben has wear. to wear a 49ers Let's jersey go. at that show. Wow. And. So I set up a camera during the last like five minutes of the game because it was neck, you know, neck and neck, and I have it on tape, watching him lose, and then he does, and then he didn't know I already had a jersey on the dining room table chair just in case, and on the tape, he, we, he's like super upset, I'm super happy, and then we hug, and then I just reach around and I pull out, <laughs> pull out this jersey and just Stop. hand it to him, and he's just crushed. And oh my god, yeah, poor, poor guy. guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. Well, tomorrow is an anniversary for. A song that you guys basically created together. Yeah, baby. Yeah. yeah. Um, the difference we just found out it's at 177 million streams on Spotify alone. Global. 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 Yeah, yeah. Which is probably mostly Spotify. Mostly Spotify. Yeah, yeah. Spotify. yeah. Who knows? 177 million is absolutely insane. Yeah, that is. Ridiculous. It's insane. Yeah. Tomorrow is the is the four year four year anniversary. Three. Three years. 18. Four. 22. We're in 22. Four years. Four years. Four years. Yeah, what does that song mean to you? How did you know, like you heard it and you were like, I have to cut this song. Yeah, it's funny. It's kind of like, um, I truly believe it's like that twist of faith thing we were talking mm-hmm. about with Sabina, mm-hmm. like in that whole trip. When uh, I had been signed with Big Machine for a year at this point, and we had a bunch of songs that we all loved as, oh, cool, that'd be a great second single. That'd be a great third single. Uh, we still couldn't find what we wanted our first debut single to be. Mm-hmm. And I was doing one of those four hour song meetings. Pitch meetings, dude. Yeah five hours maybe, mm-hmm. every 30 minutes for everybody at home, every every 30 minutes a different publisher walks in, Sony, Warner Brothers, whoever, and they have their favorite eight to 10 songs for you, They and you listen to it, and you say, yep, pass, no, cool, hold that, I'll listen to that later, I like that, for five hours. Um, and what's funny is because if you don't have a single out yet, they're just guessing who mm-hmm. you are. They don't even know who you are. Mm-hmm. And so it was the last meeting of the day. It was the last 30 minutes. And they played me the difference. And it immediately just had this swag, this cool California vibe mm-hmm. that um and that first verse, I recognized your voice, but you know, they don't tell you who it is when you're listening to it at first. And I was like, yo, this is this is awesome. I want can I hold this song? Mm-hmm. I want to hold it. 
can I have it? And then so a couple days later, they hit me back and they're like, hey, so Thomas Rhett actually um, has that song on hold. And but Thomas was doing a double album or like he was releasing a ton of songs mm -hmm. all at once. And what I've been told is because his dad, Red Akins, is one of the writers mm -hmm. with you. Because he was releasing so many, they were like, well, it would be Tyler's first and only single out yep. or like one of your many. Or one yeah. of the 30 yeah, yeah. on Thomas Rhett's album. Yeah. And probably not a single depending on <laughs> who else he was had the songs for or whatever, you know. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, so then they're like. Tyler, if you want it, it's yours. Yep. And so we're like, let's go. And we recorded it. We all fell in love with it. And then um, four years, 177, 177 million. million. Let's bro. go. So awesome. For me, it's so cool just so because nice. like, we didn't know each other in California. You know yeah. what I mean? And we knew of each other. And I knew what you were hustling. And you were not. You knew what I was hustling. And um, I don't even think I wrote that song for anybody. I just wanted to write a song. Like I said, I'm not good at like trying to get something. I just want to write it and see yeah. what it feels like. And um they they put your name up there and i was like that would be so cool for us just as california boys and um anytime you get a chance to get somebody's first single like if, if they believe in it that much it's just something i'll never take for granted so i'm really yeah. grateful for that dude oh yeah I thanks love man it. Yeah. will you do the honors of introducing it all you have to do is say your name name of the song and you're listening on yoko nashville oh i'm tyler rich this is the difference and you are listening on yoko nashville let's go Tyler Rich in the house. That was his song, The Difference, on Yoko Nashville, 96.7 FM. What's, What's up? up? <laughs> We're back. We're back. We're back. Um, Devin, you have to show your shirt off. Oh, yeah. I was. Well, I this was this accidental. Morning. I didn't even notice until Tyler said it, but my shirt says The Difference. Performance. Yeah, it says Performance is the Difference on his shirt, and that was fully unintentional. But I love there it, it is. I love it. We love to see it. <laughs> I've always loved that song. He played it for me before it came out and I was like, this is my favorite song ever. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's such a cool and it's, you know, my career has progressed enough at this point, you know, with other songs and leave her wild and better than you're used to and all these things that, um, it's cool that we get to play that song early in our set now mm -hmm. as, uh, I have to save it to the end. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And as an artist, you know, that's like one of those things you, you hope for and you wait for is like, mm -hmm. when can we play the biggest song in the middle? Yep. Yeah. And we've been playing mm -hmm. it as like number four. Right nice. in our headlining tour, and it's uh, it just it just the party. The yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. That feels so good. So we're in a time in country music where people are collaborating with people outside of country music, inside, obviously, all over the place. I want to know who is your dream collaboration outside of country music. I want to do a duet with Dua Lipa. Love that. She's a vibe. She's oh, a vibe. She's sick. Do you have yeah. a favorite duet song? Oh man. I don't even know. <laughs> so many hits. Yeah. I'm, I just, and it's, what's the one where she can't, I'm terrible with song names. You want me? I want oh, you, baby. baby. No, no, no. Rules. Uh, uh, rules. Yeah, oh, yeah. New rules or something like I that. I mean, I don't even know if she wrote it, but the performance sounds like she wrote it. Yeah. And it, I thought it was one of the like just most clever pop bangers in so I long. No rules, I got no rules. I <laughs> yeah, the beat. Yeah. yeah no. She just has a, like a swag and um, that British kind of sass. Like, yeah. 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 Um, I can what? see that. Yeah. I heard somebody call her Duo Lupo the other day. <laughs> I was like, what? just like an accidentally slip yeah. up in their name. I think it sounds Dua. so funny. Duo Lupo. Duo. <laughs> Duo Lupo. Duo. Have Dua. you seen that? Duo. I'm so obsessed with this right now. The seen? school one? Yeah. Have you seen the <laughs> meme of the girl that's like, it's not funny? I've got school. No. I've got school. Oh my gosh. I've got <laughs> school. We'll it's have to a, show you later. It's I really bet good. you everybody in chat knows. <laughs> yeah. what that is. Just drop it it's in there. Funny. It's not <laughs> funny. I've it's got not school. funny. No, it's not funny. I got school. <laughs> um, I wish I knew what you guys were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you basically just saw the whole video. That yeah. was a really good impersonation. What is something, because you've been in Nashville now for how many years? Uh, this will be seven years in May. Okay. What have you learned along the way that you kind of wish you could have told yourself seven years ago when you started that journey? Oh man. Uh, um, hard questions, bro. Yeah. Just, uh, that is a good question. <laughs> Take it slow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I jumped in so fast, manage which I was, expectations. You know that is I mean? what I mean is manage yeah. expectations. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I jumped in so fast and I took the advice of people that I'd gotten that was like from John Party and Dustin Lynch and different like mentors I had when I first moved to town was 
go out, be seen, have friends in town, be part of the community. Don't stay out until it closes and be drunk. Yeah. Um, write with any and everybody you possibly meet. The guy that works at Cookout, the bartender at Losers, write with everybody, meet everybody, do it all. Um, and that's how I spent my first couple years, like nonstop. Um, but manage expectations, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's, you expect everything's gonna happen. I don't know, every, you always think you're different. Always. You're the outlier, you're yeah. the, um, the one that's gonna make it and break it really quick and really soon. Um, and it, it just is not the reality. It doesn't matter what your social media looks like, how well your song's doing, it's all a process and it's mm -hmm. a long process and just keep your head down and um, don't talk so much. Yeah. Um, they mm -hmm. always say, you know, like train in silence and um, ask questions listen yeah i love uh the saying uh, only speak when it improves on silence i love yes. that one that's good that was in that music lyrics book is that was it uh, i'm reading this book right now Mu music lyrics in life and he does that. a whole section on that in songs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like like don't say some stuff that doesn't need to be there only yeah. say it if it's going to be better than blank right yeah okay. and sometimes silence in a song creates the tension that you need for the hook to pop you know you don't need to fill it right up until that melody hits mm -hmm. no question mm -hmm. um you are about to go on tour have this massive thing robin Ottolini is opening up some right yeah so this is the second chapter of my we did my very first ever headline tour called 2000 miles which is the name of my album we did basically 2000 miles across the west coast mm. yeah um and that was the end of last year that was all it was going to be um it went so well that we're like and you know, fans all over were like, why is this only West Coast? Yeah. Obviously, it's because we're at, you know, I do the best. So that's where we were like, first headline tour, let's be safe. You know, yeah. let's yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. Um, it did so well. And there were so many comments and messages of like, this needs to come to the Midwest. It needs to come the other side of the country. So we decided to do it. Nice. And um, it's March 9th, I think is the first day um, until April 30th. Nice. Cool. Um, where can people get tickets? Or 31st. Is April have 31 days? Uh, 30. No. April 30th. I had <laughs> January, it right. March, Another, April. Yeah. <laughs> April. Wait, January? I just skipped February. January, February, March, game? April. Yeah. I yeah. never learned that in school. I think I can yeah. do that without my knuckles. Well, it's the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> April's 30 days. Right? Yeah. For some reason, when I said oh, April 30th. Oh. The ones that are yeah, the dips yeah. well, are 30 days, and the ones that are up are 31. <laughs> the only reason I know that is because I wrote a song once called She Doesn't Exist, and it was, one of the lyrics was like, was like, she's like the 31st of April. Oh, uh, like, nice. Mm. So that's the only reason I nice. remember that. Otherwise, I would be hopeless. Yeah. So where can people buy uh, tickets for the shows? TylerRich.com forward Tyler slash Rich. tour. Um, all the March dates are opened by the duo 641. And then all the April dates are Robin Adelini. Heck yeah, let's nice. go. And you were talking about shows earlier and the fact that you get to play this one a little bit later now that it's come out. Tell me a little bit about Better Than You're Used To. Better Than You're Used To. So this song last year at the beginning of 2021, um, was one of those TikTok success stories. I just posted a teaser of it while I was driving with Sabina back from Christmas from Massachusetts. Um, and it got a few million hits that day, and Crazy. or I guess over a few days. And so we hadn't put out anything in about five months since the album had come out. And the label, um, which we know is rare, <laughs> jumped on it right away. It was like, oh, let's put this out. Yeah. And they put it out on Valentine's Day, or at least right around Valentine's Day last year. Wow. Um, and. I mean, this song was the brightest light in a long COVID dark yeah. past mm. time. Dude, watching your shows and seeing the way this song goes over live and like all the girls that are singing every word, like guys too. It's just like yeah. crazy to see like, and you just never know till you get to go perform it and see the impact and see really how it, like what kind of impact it has on people. And like, I remember watching you during that Whiskey Jam show um, and people were going absolutely nuts for this song yeah and, and it's just so awesome to watch it grow while we were still stuck at home mm -hmm. to then playing the first show like four months later when it already had you know 15 million or something like that yeah and seeing like playing the song live for the first time mm -hmm. and seeing so many people sing back it felt like you know when stars release a song and the next yep. day the whole place knows it yeah yep. it felt like that except for they had four months to learn it so right. it's cool <laughs> <laughs> amazing uh, but yeah Sick. It's all just about, you know, loving yourself, but then finding somebody that loves you better than that. Um, Let's go. And not settling. And uh, yeah, just be treated right. And you'll find the one that does it. Let's go. Well, speaking of live shows, stick around because Tyler's about to perform for us live. But first, this is Better Than You're Used To on Yoko Nashville. That was Better Than You're Used To by Tyler Rich, who is our special guest today. Tyler, you have some music prepared for us. Yeah, I'm going to do a couple... Uh, acoustic songs um so i was just saying with better than you used to that one 
was a TikTok success story. It blew up on TikTok, so then I got to release it. Um, and I just put out this song on TikTok last week. Um, the typical, you have a video of me showing Sabina the song for the first time kind of thing. And it did so well. It's almost at 4 million right now on TikTok. And so um, we're in the process of, I'm assuming, putting this one out pretty soon. Let's and, go. Uh, it's called I Know You Do. And it's literally just about, it, I'm, I'm assuming you guys can relate to this, uh, the things that um, Leah is annoyed with about you or doesn't agree with or doesn't like. But then the things that you do know that she likes. Um, <laughs> and I've ne literally never even played the song on the acoustic until this morning. So um, this is all this is all for fun. Let's Here go. Take right, it go. away. Yeah, you got it. Bro. You don't like sleeping alone. You like my heavy metal songs. You hate that small town drama. The missing calls from your mama. You don't like scary movies when I joke and call you bougie. Most of the time I might not have you all figured out. But girl, I know you do like when I bring home a only red wine. Chase down any good, good time. Shotgun tied to my Chevy. Girl, I know you do love. Wake you up late night, good love. When you're mad as hell, you can't even tell me that you love me too. Girl, I know you do. Do I like me living on my phone when I smell like barstool smoke? Making fun of you when you get tipsy. You hate to find it with the tank on empty, girl. I know you like sunshine over cold, rainy weather. You hate when we ain't together But girl, I know you do lie When I bring home a only red wine Chase down any old good time Shotgun tied to my Chevy Girl, I know you do love To wake you up late night, good love When you're mad as hell Can't even tell me that you love me too Girl, I know you do Girl, I know you do so Girl, I know you do And I bring home a only red wine Chase down any old good time Shotgun tied to my Chevy Girl, I know you do love Wake you up late night Love. When you're mad as hell, can't even tell me that you love me too. Girl, I know you do. Hell yeah. Let's go. Yeah. We you. need that one out. We need it out. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't like your heavy metal songs? Dude, oh my God. It's literally <laughs> like if distortion to her sounds like screaming. Like, yeah. There's distortion on a guitar. She goes, we have to change it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> New song, please. Yeah. But hey, the Mayomi Red One. Yeah. Woman that's after her, my that's own her heart. Jam. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, I think you had another one for us, right? I do. Yes, yes, yes. Hit us Wait, with it. Yeah. Why not? Right. All right. So this one is coming out soon. It's called Trucks Don't Lie. It ain't even two years old, barely got 10K on it There ain't a thing I wish I could change on it Thought I'd keep it and drive it to the ground No, I don't even want to drive it around That leather still smells, daisy perfume All I see in the shotgun view is your feet on a dash Hazel green eyes, you made it hard to stay between the lines It's four by four right here's for sale Rise like heaven, but it hurts like hell Gets me from maybe But it can't outrun your memory Like every mile, and it reminds me Your goodbye ain't too far behind me Wish I could been the truth Tend that I ain't missing you Trucks don't lie Like the new one in your drive Trucks don't lie Mm. And 
That giant's frame round his license place as we might have got along another time or place. Hate that looks like mine. It's been parked right there all night. Wish I could say I'm fine. But trucks don't lie. Wrong chord. <laughs> so it's four by four right here, she said. Rides like heaven, but it hurts like hell. Gets me from maybe. But it can't outrun your memory Like every mile, it reminds me Your goodbye ain't too far behind me Wish I could bend the truth And then I ain't missing you Trust on life The new one in your drive Trust on This four by four right here's for sale. Rides like heaven, but it hurts like hell. Gets me from A to B, but it can't outrun your memory like every mile. It reminds me your goodbye ain't too far behind me. Wish I could bend the truth. Then I ain't missing you. Trucks don't Wish I could bend the truth Say that he ain't there with you Trucks don't lie Hell yeah Let's go! Let's go. We have been spoiled you. today by you. you. Thank you so much for coming in. That giant slime breaks my heart. I know. Bro. I saw your Come his on. face. Giant's friend. Well, you know, it's like It's like we would have gotten along, man. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's, that's wanted to sell the truck. Because of her second verse, I want to try sell the truck because he's got the same one with the same license yeah. plate. Yeah. All the way. Yeah. Well, shout out your oh, socials yeah. so people Giants can friend. go uh stream what they can of those until they come out. Yeah, Tyler Rich everything. Um TikTok is Tyler Rich Music, where you can hear teasers of uh, some of the demos and recorded versions of that, uh, those last two songs. And then everything is, is Tyler Rich, R-I-C-H. Yeah, make sure you hit up tylerrich.com for those tickets as well when he goes on tour starting March 9th. So yeah, yeah. 